Welcome back to the Kapow Hour. I'm Lauren Powell. And I'm Sean Casey. And we are the, the Kapows. Kapow. Wait, wait, wait. Kapow. Kapow. What are we drinking there, mama? Uh, I just found, I thought I ran out of these, but it's a pumpkin ale. It's the one from Trader Joe's because as you recall, I was pregnant during pumpkin beer season. Yeah. Brutal time to be pregnant for you. Yeah. Uh, and so I made you review, I don't know, like... <laughs> 15, 15 or 16 pumpkin, pumpkin beers. beers. Yeah. And we had a lot left over. And it's like the first time where we've done a drink review video where I want the leftovers. Yeah. And so I've just been slowly making my way through it. And I just found this. I thought we were out. I looked for that specifically like three different times and couldn't find it. And there we are. It is one of my favorite pumpkin beers. Howling Gourd. Mm -hmm. It's so good. 7% ABV. Oh, really? Yeah. Ooh. Mama like. <laughs> Mama's a little tired yeah. because uh, we just got back from LA. We drove up and back in a few short hours. And, st and then Quinn, you know, still, she was still there this morning. So 4.30. We had to wake up with her. Yeah, We're used to going to bed at nine and we went to bed at midnight. Yeah, it was a long day. But I'm proud of us for like going. Going up and back from LA in a day is hard no matter what. Yeah. Doing it when you have a five month old at home who loves to wake up at 4.30 in the morning. Um, I think it, I'm, I'm actually really proud of us. What did we do in LA? So a friend of mine, this creator, her name is Adley. She, you've definitely seen her videos before. She has like figured out how to make literally anything go viral. Mm -hmm. She's so smart. She and her husband both like make just crazy videos. They go viral all the time. And she's, we've been like internet friends for several years. I don't even know how we got connected years ago and she's been traveling a lot. And so a few weeks ago she was in San Diego. We finally met her and her husband, Blake. That was great. And then she was coming back out to LA for this event for this new social media app called Vivinia, Vinavia. Vinavia. Uh, it's a new Vinavia. Like, Vinavia. I don't know. Oh. I have no idea. It's a new like live streaming app. And so it was a big launch party. And I usually like don't, I do get invited. I stu I still do get, so for those of you who don't know, California geography, myself included most of the time. <laughs> LA, with that, in the middle of the night, if you drive from San Diego to LA, it should you it could take you an hour 50. But you're never driving at midnight. There's always traffic. So it's roughly takes about three hours San Diego to LA. So like when I when we left LA, when I lived in LA, I got invited to tons of influencer events and I still never really like no, nothing makes you feel bad about yourself faster than going to an influencer event. It's just like my imposter syndrome comes out. I don't feel hot enough. I don't feel big enough. Like I don't feel successful enough. They it is the biggest hit to your ego going to those parties. So when we left LA, but I love going to them because I have no I'm like, yeah, know? I'm just the husband. I'm not even yeah. part of this. So I just have a blast talking yeah. to everybody. But when we left LA, I was like, I'm not going to miss this feeling of insecurity mm -hmm. going to these uh, influencer events. I'm not going to miss it at all. And so I still get invited to stuff and I always turn it down because I'm just like, it's not worth the drive for me to go feel bad about myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> but Adley, you know, she was going to be in town again. She invited me and I really wanted to like connect with her more. So we did it. We, we made the drive. I, every day I was like, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to do it. I kept trying to like back out in my brain. Even the day before I was like, well, what if you just went and I stayed home with Quinn? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, no, I want you to come. I'm like, all right, fine. Yeah. So we left Quinn here with our, our friend who watches her for us. So we drove up at like three event was at six. We get there early. We get there so early that I'm like, let's, I want to drink, but the event is right by the airport. So there's nothing, there's no businesses nearby. It's all like industrial space. So I'm like, let's go to a gas station. Mama needs a tall boy. <laughs> if I'm going into this situation that makes me like insecure, mm -hmm. I need, I need some booze. Yeah. So we literally went to the gas station and you got an extra tall boy. I didn't even know they, well, they were yeah. size differences. So White Claw makes like a 19 ounce tall boy, but truly makes a 24 ounce tall boy. They just had to outdo them. Well, which is like a real tall boy. Most tall boys are 24 ounces. Oh. So I don't know what White Claw is trying to pull with their 19 ounce one. White Claw is like a medium. Oh, White Claw is like, you know, a guy's dating profile saying that he's six foot when he's really 5'10". <laughs> Basically. That's what their yeah. tall boy is. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, all right, we'll go with Truly this time. 
Yeah. So we crush a couple of truly tall boys in the parking lot waiting to get in. Which is 24 ounces, so it's two Trulies. Yeah. We were waiting for 20 minutes. I drank, essentially drank two Trulies in 20 minutes. Well, and the funny thing is, he's like, oh, I just won't drink all of it. And I'm like, okay, so I'm drinking slow, <laughs> thinking that, like, you're just going to drink half. And then it's like 625, and you're like, how much do you have left of yours? I'm like, oh, you know, like half, and yours was, like, almost done. Yeah. <laughs> then he made fun of me. And I'm like, I'm trying to drink at your pace that you said. Look, I don't make sense. Stop <laughs> trying to make sense of me. Okay. Anyway, so we go to the event at 630 on the dot, which is when it was started. There already is a line. That's the other thing. Nothing makes you feel worse about yourself than waiting in a line while other people can skip the line. I guess I just didn't really understand that though, but this is like definitely typical LA. Yeah. It's an invite only event. So why are you making people wait in line? I, I, don't, th I don't think they were ready to start. Yeah. I wouldn't have minded except for it was raining, raining and windy and cold. And like, I didn't bring a jacket and a lot of people nine didn't have jackets. Yeah. Cause everyone was like dressed to the nines yeah. and jackets don't go with nines, <laughs> but it's funny when we pulled up. So as we, it's valet, we're pulling up to the valet and there's a car in front of us. What is it? Like a Tesla? Uh, it was like a tricked out Mercedes, like okay. a really cool looking Mercedes. And like this child gets out of the driver's well, seat. Well, like we're, we're sort of just like sitting there waiting and you know, like Lambo doors open and we're just like, <laughs> oh my God, who is it? And then it's like a 16 year old boy. He's <laughs> who covered, looks like he's 14. Yeah. He's like covered in acne. Like he's prepubescent. Yeah. He is a child. <laughs> he gets out and he tosses his keys to the valet guy. And I was like, this is why I left LA. <laughs> oh my gosh. But I mean, hey, good for him. If you're 16 years old driving a car like that. And right. like, like, I would not have guessed he was even 16. Yeah. Like I would have guessed 14 because he had his buddy with him. And then I saw them later and like they had like a 60 year old guy chaperoning them around. I'm like, oh, is that their agent or their dad yeah, or something? Probably, probably but, their agent. But yeah, being with the the Gen Z TikTok it's even, crew, it's, it's very it's, it's interesting. Even, there's even more reason to feel insecure. Because before it was like my millennial peers. Why do you feel insecure? I'm like, this is a 16 year old kid. I, I mean, he didn't make me feel insecure, but yeah. it's. It's just this idea. It's weird being at an event where you're like, I thought I was successful, but you walk into a room with a bunch with a bunch of people you assume are way bigger than you. Yeah. Uh, so it's just like it's it's like you're you're. I felt like the low man on the totem pole. But you uh, have no idea. I, I have no idea. Yeah, it's it's a me problem for sure. That's why I chug two true two <laughs> trulies. I just think of myself as a high man on totem pole every time I go yeah. into the room, and then it's great. <laughs> well, that's why when we were like getting dressed for the party, I'm like postpartum. You know, my body has changed. I don't fit in any of the clothes that I used to wear, any of my cute clothes, and so I'm like. I don't even know what to wear to this. I'm just going to wear what like I feel good in. I need you to represent our family and wear something loud <laughs> and colorful, yeah. kind of obnoxious. Yeah. And it was perfect. You were my little arm candy. You had on like these hot pink. You think these chairs are hot pink? <laughs> no. These were like electric pink pants. Which also just happened to be the color of the red carpet and the Oops. company's colors. They had like yeah. five Tesla cyber trucks wrapped in pink yeah. parked outside. Your so kind of party. It was perfect. Yeah, I was in heaven. So I felt good walking in everyone. Because I feel like that you look at someone like you wearing an outfit like that and you're like, oh, that guy must be someone. <laughs> because no normal person would dress like that. No one would ever wear those pants. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm someone. Yeah. So Not that a, felt good. Like yeah. you were our little, you were my arm candy. Yeah. It made me feel better walking into the party. Just a little side note. I have told you this. So we're waiting in line and there's this guy. He has this jacket on that I really liked. And I kind of leaned over to Lauren. And I was like, oh, I really like his jacket. So at the end of the night, I passed him in the bathroom and he calls out after me and he goes, I love your pants. And I call <laughs> back, I love your jacket. <laughs> and I didn't even see each other, but we could hear each wow. other from outside of the room. Yeah. So it made me feel good. He was probably like 18. Just but bros being bros. Just bros being bros. So the party ended up being fun. It like started out, you know, I'm always in my head. I just like when you're standing in line and then all these people show up. All these and, beautiful people dressed and like up. Agents yeah. or whoever, they escort them to the front of the line. Like it all just makes you feel like, well, what what am I? Mm -hmm. It's just this weird, it never makes me feel good about myself. Um, and so I just choose to not go to those events or put myself in positions where I don't, I don't feel my best. But I did it anyway, out of my comfort zone. It was great. So we got to hang out with Adley and Blake and like 
she was trying to, she was like staging a viral event. Like her brain is crazy. She's just always thinking like, how, how can I turn this scenario or this situation, this environment into a video that people would watch? Mm -hmm. Um, so it was really cool to see her in action. Yeah. They had one of the real housewives of Beverly Hills there. She's one of the like, uh, guests of honor. Yeah. And she, and I don't know, I don't know how Adley is so connected to everyone, but she convinced this real housewives lady to let, there's this guy named the real Tarzan who also was a guest of honor and he has like an, live animals and he had a lizard and he had an iguana and somehow Adley convinced the real housewives lady to let the Tarzan guy like put his lizard in her hair. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how that happened, but she's, she's got a gift. Incredible. So it's fun. I'm glad we went. It was fun. I'm glad. Yeah. I mean, we spent five hours in the car for four hours. Yeah. Well, not we, even well, three hours at the event, but. So we get to the bar at the event and it has like fireball listed on the menu. And I'm like, yes, give it to me. And the whatever bar I'm at didn't have fireball. So then I'm like, all right, I guess I'll have a double Don Julio. <laughs> so I do a shot of two shots of tequila. Like this guys, this is like me just trying to get out of my head and be yeah. like, let me enjoy myself. Give me the tequila. <laughs> It should, you know, pair nicely with the truly in my belly. Yeah. Yeah. You were having a good time. And I knew, like, I knew I was driving home. So like I had my truly's and one other drink and then sort of just said, Hey, go do your thing. Yeah. There's this creator. Her name's Mandon Matthews. And I followed her forever. She's a comedian. Uh, she had a baby like two months after we did and she was there. So Adley introduced me to her and her baby daddy, Johnny, who also is a creator. I didn't know that. Uh, anyway, they were, so it was fun, like getting to talk to Two people that I've been familiar with, but no, haven't really mm -hmm. gotten to know. So I'm, just I'm felt, proud of us. Yeah, I'm just proud felt of good me. getting out on a Thursday. Yeah, it's something that we. I mean, even prior to having a kid, we probably wouldn't necessarily do something like that. So, moral of that very long story is, I'm tired, <laughs> and I need a seven percent pumpkin beer. So here. How we many are. times have we started our podcast this this season with "I'm tired"? <laughs> yeah, probably every time. Every single one. <laughs> There's a theme. Oh, so I feel like we gotta. Continue this crazy Blake Lively, Ryan Reynolds saga. Yeah. Okay. So right after we filmed that podcast last week where I was talking about Blake Lively, liked my review video of her cocktail line and she commented and I freaked out. Um, literally after we filmed that podcast, maybe the next day, Ryan, I was going through my notifications and Ryan Reynolds liked the video too. Yeah. The universe is just like forcing this. That's so supportive. Yeah. Like he's liking a review of his wife's cocktail line. That's pretty great. Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't he do that? Why would he? He's Ryan Reynolds. He's, Cause he's awesome. And like when you're that famous, you know that your likes, you'd be very careful or, yeah, yeah. what you like, what you double tap on. Cause your name will show up. He's got like 50 million Instagram followers. And yeah. so if any of those Instagram followers see a post that he has let, that he liked his name will be f the first name mm -hmm. that shows up as liking it. Yeah. So he's, I know everyone is, I know celebrities are very intentional. So it was very intentional for him to like, like that and support it. And honestly, he probably was like, Oh, if I like this video, she'll probably Lauren Sell might more. <laughs> right. Or Lauren will like comment about the video again. Yeah, and then yeah. remind, we'll get more press about Betty booze. Like mm -hmm. for makes sense. Yeah. So that was crazy. So and we're getting then, dinner with them next week. Yeah. They live in New York, I guess. I, I don't know where they live. I'm not trying to be creepy. That was uh. weird. <laughs> 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 I think they live in New York because they're, Oh, she's always going out with Taylor Swift. Oh, okay. Who lives in well, New York? Well, hey, we, we drove to LA. We can drive to New York. Yeah, let's just go to New York for, for an evening. It was funny on Instagram. I was like, I was trying, I wanted to, you know, I did freak out. I had this fangirl moment. And so I posted on my stories that I had just seen Ryan Reynolds liked my video, but I wanted, it's, it's Blake's, like it's her cocktail line. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't want to just be like, oh, Ryan Reynolds liked my video. I wanted to be like, you know, Ryan Reynolds liked my Blake Lively cocktail line video. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, you know what they would do? Yeah. They would be like, Blake Lively's husband just liked, liked my, my video. video. Yeah, that's perfect. And if you're familiar with his Instagram handle, which is like Van City Reynolds, then you know who that is. Right. And you also know who Blake Lively's right. husband is. And so I wasn't sure if that joke was going to, I figured like. Oh, I, I thought it was perfect. Some people are going to get it. And some people are going to be like, uh, do you not know who Ryan Reynolds is? Like. <laughs> which I got a few comments, but I mostly got comments of people who were like, 
I love that you keep referring to him as Blake Lively's husband. Yeah, yeah. So they're always like trolling each other. Right. Which like is, cropping her out of, yeah. half cropping her out of photos. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Oh, and then, so there was a part in the podcast episode that got cut out last week because we were talking all about our connection to Ryan Reynolds uh, with how I dressed as him for Halloween, yada, yada, yada. And I mentioned this other connection that I forgot, which was Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds got married in my hometown. And then I Googled it and I got this fact kind of wrong. And so I just cut it all out. You did? Yeah. Uh. So they spent their honeymoon. They got dinner at this famous restaurant in my small hometown, Rappahannock, Virginia. There's this, it's like, it is so small. There's one stoplight. Our grocery store is 20 minutes away. Or it was when I lived there in the 90s. Maybe they have a grocery store now. My high school was like, there's like 90 people in my graduating class. Like this was the mountains of Virginia. I lived on a, I lived on a mountain. School bus took us 20 minutes to get to school. You know what I mean? So the fact that people don't even know where Rappahannock is yeah. and the fact that they went to dinner at this famous called the Inn in Little Washington, they went to dinner was it, there. Was it famous when they went to it or is it famous now it's, because well, they, fam- they went to it? I guess it's not famous. It's really well known for like really good high-end food. I never for, ate- For Rappahannock, Virginia. Yeah. But I guess it's well known like- yeah. I'm sure they got a lot more business after that, but I just thought that was crazy how I'm, how I'm entrenched in connections with them. Enough about Blake and Ryan. <laughs> what are we really talking about? I don't know. You tell me. I always come into this completely blind. No, you're leading it this time. I am? Yeah, let's do two types of people in a marriage because I feel like they're, we come across so many videos and memes online yep. where they're, they never miss. You see it and you're like, that's me and that's you. Yep. It, it doesn't matter what it is. It could literally be like, there's two types of people in a marriage. One likes pizza and one doesn't. And we would be like, oh my God. <laughs> so maybe, maybe not that one. But yeah. 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 We both love pizza for the record. For the record. There are two types of people in a relationship. One who believes the food has gone bad. And the other is the person who doesn't believe expiration dates are real. <laughs> you are a garbage disposal. <laughs> Literally just yesterday, I was like, did you check the expiration on that? And you were like, yeah, three days ago. Yeah, expir- exp- expiration dates are like Suggestion. suggestions. Yeah. Then I'm not sure about that. But I, ha- I constantly have to be like, smell this. Yeah. You're getting better though. Because you would be like, oh, it expires in three days. We're not eating it. <laughs> we're too close. Now, even if it's after the expiration date, if, if we smell it and it smells okay, you'll, you'll eat it. It's funny, I just read an article that was like about how expiration dates need to change because so much food is wasted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah we're, we're definitely, I'm the you one. You like to live dangerously. <laughs> I, th- I think we And have... I like to not shit my brains out. Humans have noses. You can tell <laughs> if something is, what, is what bad a, or wow, not. <laughs> wow, humans have noses, people. Yeah, we're built for this. Genetically built to You've know. You've been evolved. Yeah, we're, we've evolved to this point where like <laughs> we can tell if something's bad or not. But then how do you get food poisoning? Huh? Sometimes you get, you get food poisoning not because you ate something that smelled bad. I don't know. We haven't gotten food poisoning from our groceries yet. Knock on wood. Yeah. I got food poisoning that one time with Sarah that we were making pizzas from scratch and we used expired almond meal. Remember that? Yeah. Which, but like, how do you know that almond meal goes bad? Like, that's the part. It had an expiration date. If you listen to the expiration date, <laughs> then you know it goes bad. <laughs> but like, also our house has things, you keep looking up at the wall. There's an ant. <laughs> I have ADD. There are things in our house that, you know, Tums that expired six years ago. And that means they're not effective anymore. So the almond meal that we had, was it like four years old? Yeah. Yeah. So that makes sense. But like with our groceries that we bought last week, probably can stretch it a little bit. Whatever. It's fine. I'm just going to live longer. (laughs) I mean, we eat the same thing. So if I'm going down, you're coming down with me. Yeah, but I eat it before its expiration date. (laughs) Well, anyway. Okay. Agree to disagree. Yeah. Okay. Not solving any problems here. (laughs) What's next? There are two types of people in a marriage. Either you say, I'm never taking medicine for any reason, or (laughs) I might have a headache today. I'm going to take 12 Advil. (laughs) Which one are you? I think you know. But you never take Advil. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. That's the, the first one. Oh, I thought you were saying I was that one. No. 
Because when I was pregnant, I like refused to take any medicine. True. That is true. But normally you, you know, I'm just like, oh, I'm fine. I'll, I'll be fine. You uh, okay. Know? Especially like. <laughs> I'm so conflicted because I was like, yeah, I'm going to take 12 Advil at a time. <laughs> yeah. But then I also wasn't, didn't want to take any medicine while I was pregnant. Yeah. That's weird. You changed, changed sides. But yeah, you, you're like, oh, my neck hurts or, oh, my, my arms, my golf elbow is flaring up. And I'm like, why don't you take some Advil? Why don't you take an anti-inflammatory? And you're like, yeah, maybe. And then you never do. And yeah. then you complain about it hurting still. And I'm like, did you take it? And you're like, no. I get it from my mom. My mom is exactly the same way. What is it? I don't know. I don't know why? if it's like our like Midwest Michigan mentality. That what do like, you, what do you, you just want to tough it out? I don't know. Like I, I'm not doing it like intentionally. But I just, I'm like, no, I'll be fine. What if you have a headache, a hangover headache? Will you take medicine? Yes, I'll take, I'll take Advil. The original tweet here is from a comedian named Emily Moraine. And she said it's like family based. So like how you are with your medicine uh. is how you were raised in your family. Mm. And I, I think that's definitely true from my end. And even though my mom would always encourage kids to take it, she would never do it herself. And I think I've become you that. noticed it. Yeah, I've become that person where like. I'll tell you to take Advil. I'll yeah, like, you hey. tell me all the time. Yeah, but I don't ever take it myself, and I don't know why. I have Advil. Like, I grew up with migraines, really bad migraines, and so I have purse Advil. Like, yeah. I have I have to have a pain med, a, like Advil, ty Tylenol, ibuprofen, whatever, on my person at all times just in case I get a random migraine. I have purse Tums. <laughs> I have a Tide pen. I'm just prepared for, like, any catastrophe. Man, Tide Pens. So good. Tide Pens and Magic Erasers. What yeah. are they about? What are they smoking? Man, when I went to New York to visit Billy, we were out and we, I had. Where is this going that started with <laughs> Tide Pens and Magic Erasers and now you're out in New York? I'm out in New York and we went out for Italian and I spilled oh. spaghetti sauce on my white shirt. And it was at the very beginning of the night and I was just like, well, this this is where I am. This is how it's going to go. And my friend Farhan was like, no, we're getting you a Tide pen and we're going <laughs> to clean that shirt. So did you go to like CVS or something? So we're in New York, you know, they're not like CVS is on every corner. Oh. They're like, there's little bodegas, you know, that have stuff. And so we probably went to like five different stores over the course of like 45 minutes. Oh my God. Trying to find a Tide pen. And everyone's like, dude, we don't need it. And I'm like, Farhan, I don't need it. And Farhan's like, we're getting you a Tide pen. And so on the fifth attempt, we go to this store, you know, you go to a bodega in New York and you're like, Hey, do you have a Tide pen? And the guy's like, ah, oh, maybe. And he goes to this aisle and this like, like reaches behind a few things and he pulls out a Tide pen and we pay for it. And we get on the street and Farhan's like doing his magic on my shirt and it like, it works. And that was my ex first experience with the Tide pen. And wow. I was just like, Oh my God, this is amazing. How did, yeah. you know, he's like, is it, you've never used a Tide pen before? So now we have Tide Pens in the house because I went and bought some. I've always had a Tide Pen in my purse. It's probably expired. <laughs> How come you never shared that with me? You don't stain often. Oh, yeah. Tide Pens. Where were we? I have no clue. How <laughs> we got there. There are two types of people in every relationship. One is a person who stacks the dishwasher like a Scandinavian architect. And the other is a person who stacks the dishwasher like a raccoon on meth. I get it done. <laughs> I didn't even ask which one you thought you were. We can both fit the same amount of dishes in there. Why does it matter how it looks? <laughs> so you're saying you're the raccoon on meth in this in this instance. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> you go go in behind me and rearrange the dishwasher. I do because there's who a good cares? <laughs> because when the way you put stuff in when we run it, the dishes don't get washed correctly. No, yeah. that's not true. That is true. Okay, fine. I'm not going to do the dishes anymore. <laughs> See, this is what happens. Yeah, I'm not good at it. <laughs> oh, fine. Okay, fine. I'll just never load the dishes. Actually, uh, when I was a kid and we had chores, my sister and I always got assigned to do the dishes and my brother always got to unload. And so I was, just, I don't know. I just, I hate doing the dishes. And actually now I don't care because the dishwasher is so effective. I just put all the dirty dishes in the dishwasher and let it do its thing. Now I hate unloading. But when I was a kid, I really wanted that. Like I didn't, I didn't want to do the messy, gross thing. You wanted the clean part. I wanted the clean part. But anyway, so then I would intentionally be bad at doing the dishes <laughs> so that my mom wouldn't make me do them anymore. Do you think this is carried over into our marriage? Why? <laughs> what do you mean? 
<laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? I don't intentionally do things bad. I just do things bad. Mm-hmm. Maybe subconsciously. You did do all the dishes while I was pregnant. Mm-hmm. That was the least you could do. Yeah. I didn't carry a baby, so I had to carry the dishes. Yeah. That was great. And then after the baby came, I was like, ooh, do I have to go back to doing these again? Yeah. Still not quite doing them as much as you. <laughs> I was like, just during pregnancy or? I feel like it's your thing. It's just your thing now. I don't like doing dishes. I just know that there's You're a right way. You're just so good at it. Uh-huh. And the way oh, you thanks, stack the, yeah. the dishwasher. Oh, uh, my God. You're yeah. so good at You're stacking. You're like a Scandinavian architect. You really are. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I should just keep doing it yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you got to lean into the to the things you're good at. Okay. I love that these things that I'm calling out have been very clear to you. Like I immediately. I didn't pin anything that makes you look bad. Because <laughs> you told me to pick the, the topic. So, oh, I thought this was an interesting one. There are two types of people in a relationship. One is a person who drinks water and the other is the one who refills their water for them and also their own. Mm. Which one are you? Yeah. So I approach this differently, actually. I think you're the one who goes around and finishes all my drinks. Yeah. That's that's what this should be. In my mind, I just saw water and refill and like. No. But you do. I mean, once we're on the couch at the end of the night, I'm not getting up. Yeah. And so if my water's empty, for whatever reason, I'll be like, can you fill up my water bottle? And you will. You just keep saying yes. <laughs> Like, I'm going to keep asking if you keep saying yes. Yeah. We're both very comfy on the couch usually, but you never say no to filling up my water. Mm-hmm. I want you to be hydrated. So I think there are two types of people. There's the one who drinks most of the beverage, but doesn't quite finish it. And then there's the one who goes around <laughs> and finishes all those drinks that that person has left around the house. Yeah, that's that's definitely us. So like Coke Zeros, if you, if you see a Coke Zero on the counter... It probably is half full at any given time. I know there's a little treat for me left, so yeah. I grab it and finish it and put it in the recycling bin. Yeah, and I always leave like some waters, but but you used to go around and drink out of my water bottle, and I would get mad because I couldn't tell how much water I'd had that day because you were drinking it. Yeah, so now we have separate water bottles, which I don't think is crazy. No, but it is. It's funny. Like I'm a finisher offer. You yeah, know, that's that's my personality type. And I'm a leave a little or. <laughs> Well, I have a weird, the Coke Zero, the stuff in the house is different, right? Like sometimes I leave a little bit of water and a little Coke Zero. Not intentionally, I'm just done. But in general, when it comes to like, especially like booze or like a beer can or beer bottle, I refuse to drink the last inch because it just is like warm backwash to me. So you let me drink your warm backwash? You let you, that's on you. If you see a (laughs) beer bottle of mine that has an inch left and you go and finish that it's not, i don't do it with beer yeah with cocktails no i drink suck those dry yeah but for whatever reason like anything in a can or a bottle i don't want to i can't finish mm. it just grosses me out the last little bit oh this uh, this was an interesting one i think we're both kind of this so there are two types of people in every relationship one that packs six days before a trip and then one that wakes up a day in the day of and realize they need to do laundry <laughs> I think you definitely pack last minute. Yeah. But you're pretty good about laundry. Yeah. And I love packing. Yeah. Like, I don't love packing from a trip, getting back. And I don't love unpacking. Right. But if I know I have a trip coming up, I can't wait to start packing. Yeah, you're packing. starting two, three days in advance. And honestly, it bites me in the ass because I forget what I've packed and what <laughs> I still need to pack. Yeah. Because I don't always finish packing. I just start it. I start, I have my little piles. Because, you know, you can't put them in the packing cubes yet or they get all wrinkled because mm-hmm. it's been three too days. Many, yeah, too many days in advance. So it, it's it's a blessing and a curse. Well, and, and similar for me where I wait till the last second and then I'm like packing in the 4 a.m. in the dark and I always forget something. Inevitably, I'm always like, oh, I, I brought four pairs of shoes, but one pair of socks or something. Yeah, so like it's that. like honestly, we're both we need to meet in the middle and we should just pack the night before. <laughs> yeah. Because neither way results in us not forgetting something. And then hilariously on the other end, you hate unpacking and I unpack right away. Yeah. <laughs> I still we went to Big Bear uh five weeks ago. I actually just found my little packing <laughs> cubes. You buried them like underneath your clothes in the, in the closet. I just found all the sweaters that I had taken to the mountains. Because I thought you unpacked all my packing cubes. I was like, that's so nice. 
you unpacked my suitcase for me? And then, no, they just ended up at the floor of the closet, pushed to the back. Yeah, I don't know how they got Still, there. Still, I found them. Mm-hmm. Didn't do anything about it. Still not unpacked yet. Because I don't need those sweaters. What's the point? <sighs> because our closet is just cluttered. <laughs> oh, this is an interesting one. I don't know if I have a, a preference for this, but I can see I can see how people do. So in every in every relationship, there are two types of people: one who stores cups and glasses upside down, and the other one stores them right side up, and they believe that the other person is wrong. What do we do? I do them upside down. Where did you get that? I don't know. Is that what you did at your home? I have no idea. So cups go upside down, plates and bowls obviously go right side up, but I I don't know why I do that. I think I only do it because that's how you do it. Yeah. But if I see one. But it in makes the, sense because then honestly in our bar cabinets, all those glass like get dust specialized barware, if they aren't placed down, they sit in there for so long that then they just smell dusty. Yeah. So I, I think that's always why I did it. It was like dust, but I don't know. How like, come we don't put plates upside down? Great question. We do have a woman who is going to organize our kitchen for us. We could see if she could try stacking plates upside down and see. I should be like, you guys are morons. You're insane. Yeah. I can't help you anymore. So why are we having someone come organize our kitchen? Uh, this this woman reached out to me on Instagram. She started this organizing, home organization business. I think it's called Neatly. And she's just getting up and running off the ground. And she needed like local clients. And uh, so I was like, okay, you want to come organize my catastrophe of a pantry and also all my cabinets that I just like nothing has a real rhyme or reason for being where it is. And it was just when we moved in, it's just we had friends help us unpack and that's for you know, as the boxes were unloaded, it. they just got put yeah. onto shelves and cupboards and stuff. So I was like, yes, please come help me. I it's it's so far gone. Even though while I was pregnant, you know, I went through my like nesting phase where I cleaned out a lot of the pantry, threw out a lot of stuff, but it's still a disaster somehow. So anyway, she's, she's going to organize the whole pantry and all the kitchen and stuff, which is funny because when I did that video, uh, totaling up the total cost, totaling up the cost of my bar, I went through all my liquor cabinets of which I have several and I've just collected so much stuff over the years. Mm -hmm. And I was, there's no like category. There's like, you know, you'd think, oh, all the whiskeys would be on this shelf, all the tequilas would be on this shelf, but it's impossible. There's way too many whiskeys. They don't all fit on one shelf. So then you have a shelf and a half. Like there's no real cool way to organize all that. But anyway, everyone in the comments was like, oh my God, I just, I really hope you organized that <laughs> after you put, you pulled everything out. Please tell me you put it, put it back in better. You did not. I tried. I was like, okay, yeah, let's try this. So I put all the whiskeys on one shelf, but then I ran out of room. So I had to put more whiskeys on the, on the shelf above it, yeah. but, but it didn't fill up a whole second shelf. So then you have tequilas commingling with the whiskeys. You know, I'm pretty OCD and like about stuff like that. So if it doesn't bother me, then you're fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it's out of sight, out of mind. You don't even know what's in those cabinets. No. It's great. It's my own little private cabinet. You, your OCD can't touch. <laughs> just sitting over there you don't even know what's in it it's funny angelique was here today and she was like taking stock of everything measuring everything and she's like oh there are there are some drawers and cabinets that like have organization i'm like yeah those are the drawers that i was allowed to to take over (laughs) allowed take them all over yeah not allowed allowed is the wrong word those are just the ones where i was like this is driving me nuts i need to organize this well part of the kitchen issue is we don't have a junk drawer our kitchen's amazing. I love our kitchen, but we only have three top drawers. Oh. And when you only have three top drawers, you don't want to waste one on a junk drawer. So we don't have a junk drawer. We have a junk counter corner <laughs> where like stuff just ends up. It's got jars full of pencils and stuff. Pens. Is it drunk? Pencils. Is, we keep saying drunk drawer. Maybe because we're. Am I saying drunk drawer? Thought, junk drawer. Yeah, you almost said it. We had one of those in Michigan. Is it junk drawer regional? Does everyone have drunk drawers? Everyone has junk drawers. Junk drawers. Junk drawers. Junk. I'm saying junk, aren't I? (laughs) Sounds like you're saying drunk. Junk drawers. Now you said junk. Junk drawers. Yeah. Junk drawers. Mm. Junk drawers. Okay. How much of your beers left? Not any. (laughs) Just the backwash. (laughs) Um, No, Uh, junk drawer. Yeah. I think in my house in Virginia... We had like several junk drawers. There's like one in the basement, Mm -hmm. one in the kitchen. Yeah, we had one in Michigan too. I'm just wondering, is that normal? I think so. Okay. Let us know. Is a drunk drawer 
I said it intentionally. That oh, time. Okay. Is that normal where you're from? Okay, um, I think that's, that's all the, the two types of people I have for right now. There are two types of people in the world. It's already 10 PM and it's only 10 PM and they marry each other. Yeah. I had that one, but I didn't feel like that really applied to us. I don't think it does at all. Yeah. It's already 10 PM. It's only 10 PM is like college Lauren. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Now I'm like, oh my God, it's already eight o'clock. No, especially once you have a have a baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What no. is time? Do night owls and early birds marry each other? It's a great point. That just seems like recipe for disaster. Yeah. It's like if you're a night owl, like our friend Bix, her and her husband are both night owls. Right. If you're We're on not opposite night. schedules, no. how does that work? Like we go to bed and I wonder if this is, I wonder how common this is. When we go to bed, we both go to bed at the same time. We watch a show together. We're both done. Maybe we watch an extra episode, whatever. And then we go to bed at the same time. A lot of people that I know, one person will go to bed and the other will stay up watching or playing video games or mm-hmm. something like how I wonder how common it is for parents to go to bed at the same time. Maybe yeah. once you have kids, it changes. Yeah. Especially if you have a baby waking up early. I'm, I'm curious if that is common or for weirdos. Oh yeah, this is 1000% you. There are two types of people in a relationship. There's the one who likes to clean up as they cook. (laughs) And then there's those who like to use every dish, (laughs) pot, spoon in the whole kitchen. It is a disaster. Like, so you'll (laughs) offer to cook. And sometimes I'm just like, I'm not sure I want that because if you cook dinner, then I clean. If I cook dinner, you clean. But the rub of the grin is when I cook dinner, I'm cleaning as I go. There isn't as much for you to clean up. When you cook dinner, the whole kitchen is touched. <laughs> I'm like, you you don't reuse pots. You don't like use the same pot for anything. You'll use six pots to cook a vegetable and a, and a protein. <laughs> I don't know. That's just, just not efficient. Yeah. I am like... I literally am cleaning up. I'm packing things up. I'm putting things away as I go. Mm -hmm. And so when you do it, it's a nightmare. And as generous as it is for you to offer to cook, sometimes it's not worth it. Yeah. I've, I've realized this, you point this out to me and I, so now I'm like trying to be more conscious about how many pans and (laughs) ladles and stuff I use, but I don't know. I just, I want to use the correct tool. (laughs) It is weird how like a lot of these, I feel like I'm a very neat person in most aspects, but like that instance, I'm not a neat person at all. Yeah. It's weird how like some of those things manifest themselves in different scenarios where like I wouldn't expect me to be like that, but that's how I am when I cook. But what is the other thing you do in the kitchen that is insane? You didn't even know you did. Uh, I leave cabinet doors open. You open all the cabinets, you leave them open. And then you walk away. I come out and I'm like, every cabinet's open. You're not, not while you're cooking. Just literally, if you go in for a glass of water, two <laughs> cabinet doors are open. You've gotten better. Yes. Again, since you pointed out, I. You are. It is funny. You're so neat and meticulous for those things to also be a part of your personality is very confusing. Yeah. I don't know. Like a glitch. <laughs> Oh yeah. Okay. There are two types of people in the world. Someone who has a half tank of gas and says, oh man, I should fill up. And someone who's on E and says, I got time. Yeah. Yeah. Or my husband will fill that up for me in the morning. Yeah. It's really great that we only have one car. (laughs) I don't think I've pumped the gas in two years. Yeah. I don't think I have. Certainly not while I was pregnant. Yeah. It's dangerous out there for pregnant people. I also, so I have a car wash membership and there's a Costco gas station. You have right your little routine. I have a little routine where I wake up on Saturday morning and I go get the car washed. I hand dry it, do all the things clean inside. And then I go fill up the gas tank. So it's your little, it's your little treat for yourself. Yeah. It's a little treat for myself and for you. So you have gas to drive. I don't really care if the car's clean. That's definitely on you. Yeah. I appreciate that the car's clean. I wouldn't notice that it was dirty for another six I months. I know. I've seen your cars that you own separately. <laughs> yes. It's great. <laughs> you keep our car, car so clean and stocked on gas. Mm-hmm. I've run, have you ever run out of gas? One time, but I was like coasting. I have coasted into a gas station wow. before. Yeah. So like my car had turned off Wow. and I was coasting and I made it. That's the only time I've ever had mm-hmm. that happen. How about you? Oh yeah. I've run out of gas a couple of times. And Did yet you coast. still, still do the still thing. Still live dangerously. Yeah. yeah feel like I can get there. It feels like the 
uh, the when the empty gas light turns on, that feels like suggestion, like your expiration <laughs> dates. I'm like, I probably have 50. Oh, 50. More miles. No, the rule is you probably have one more gallon. So whatever. That means nothing to me. What is a gallon? How far does a gallon get me? Well, it depends on your miles per gallon that you're getting. So like SUVs, you probably have 20 miles. Cars, you probably have 30 miles. That's that's the rule I operate under. I don't know if that's right or not, but I've always heard when that comes on and says you have nothing left, you probably have one more gallon left. One time in college when Lindsay and I, we drove from North Carolina to Purdue to go to a frat party. <laughs> Purdue is in Indiana. <laughs> uh, so it's like an 11 hour drive, I think. That would have been a great party. It was fun. Yeah, they... they um, Somebody swallowed a goldfish. That was a little weird, but oh. it was like, oh, these parties are a little more like it's clear at some of the frat parties I went to at UNC. It felt like the parties, they spent all their money on like booze. This party felt more decorative. Like they really had a bit of a like decor budget and like goldfish budget, I guess. Yeah. Um, That's the first time I ever used a breathalyzer. Mm. They were like seeing how high everyone could blow. It's definitely that's college kids for you. Mm. But anyway, on the way home, not that night. It's not like we went to the party and then drove home the next. It was like at the end of the weekend, we drove back and we're driving through like West Virginia and like ran out of gas on the exit ramp to go get gas. And it's like midnight. There's two girls, you know, it's two girls. So we like, we called the cops and we were like, can somebody just, can someone, so the cops came and they like took us to the gas station mm. Uh, smart to get to fill up like a little what are those called a little gas canister can yeah gas can and then take it back to the car and fill it up it was my little my little chevy cavalier <laughs> yeah you guys just turned your southern accent on real strong yeah irrational or not i hate going to the gas station like i never cared as much in my 20s or when i was a teenager like but now maybe living in la maybe this way but i'm very cognizant of being watched or looked at mm. and a gas station, like especially if I'm going out to dinner or something and I, I'm dressed really nicely and I go to pump gas, I now I, I feel the, the feel least exposed. safe, yeah. feel exposed. Like there's nothing that makes you feel more dangerous. Like it just feels so dangerous to be a woman going to the gas station, it dressed cute. So mm. I'll like, I, if I'm, if like literally that's why I probably will let you get gas for the most part is like, I don't feel in San Diego. I don't feel it as, as much, but in LA, I definitely, it felt like drawing too much attention to myself, pumping gas in like a cute outfit, huh. um, which is just like not a thing that you could ever comprehend of just not feeling safe. I'm like, Hey, look at me. I'm wearing my pink party pants. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Do you, so there's two types of people, uh, one with a clear inbox and one with like 12,000 unread emails. Which one are you? 12,000 unread emails. Yeah, okay. This is another piece of huh. my personality, like, like, which doesn't fit. Yeah. Like, I should have a very, very organized, meticulous inbox, and I don't. Do you leave the little red notification on your phone so you can see that you have 12,000 no, emails? No, I, I just turn it off. Yeah. yeah. Same. I've, I've done some work, like, once every five years, I'll like get obsessed and try and clean it up. And for like a month or two, I'll have a really good system. I actually think it might be more insane to have an empty or a uh, completely red inbox. Like you have checked every email or deleted all the unread messages. I think that's possibly crazier than yeah. just having a chaotic inbox because we get messages, you know, coupons, newsletters. It's not just, oh, I have... 10,000 emails I need to get to eventually. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. a lot of garbage. Right. Yeah, completely agree. I mean, that's also interesting coming from the woman who just had to <laughs> to close her hotmail. Yeah, RIP. I finally had to shut down. Did we shut it down? No, we just I can't this, use it. I have this email address that I was using since I was a teenager. Um, and I would use it for all my coupons. What You just sign up for a new website, new new store, whatever. It was like just for junk that I still wanted to read every now and then. And I don't know how many emails you need to reach capacity. It's 50 gigabytes is what and they give you. So I've had it for probably 20 years. 
uh, and I, I reached fullness and I couldn't, it like, wouldn't let me now I'm screwed. I'm locked out of so many things because I That's can't the, get like, in password reset email. Yeah, and you I can't. made some mistakes. It's <laughs> fine. I was pregnant when it got full and then I just had no energy to fix it. <sighs> so we're getting there. Okay. How do you put dishes in the dishwasher? Are they clean when you put them in? Are they full of food? Oh, Are I they rinse. rinsed? I rinse for sure. Just a rinse. Mm -hmm. Is there any food on the plate before it goes in? I used to be very thorough. And then like I read more articles that said like, you don't need to do that. Where does all the food go? Cause I definitely put stuff in there that's covered in food. I don't know. I've seen what you put in. <laughs> do you take it out and then wash it? <laughs> Sometimes. Wow. Yeah. Cause I'm like, how are you comfortable putting that in? Cause I want to see what the dishwasher can do. <laughs> I want it to live up to its fullest potential. Yeah. It's uh, a dishwasher, not a dish wiper steamer yeah like, no i understand i've i've gotten better i still give it a little little rinse though here's an ocd thing for you you can't have the volume on the tv at an <laughs> uneven number yeah or like a half seas yeah you have to be at a solid round whole number yep yeah i don't know what it is but like so sometimes if i'm really just trying to mess with you i'll intentionally go to like 51.5 <laughs> and i know you see it i see it and i'm like where's the remote give me the remote <laughs> I don't know what it's it is. It crawl. has nothing to do with the volume itself. It's just 51.5. Why? Why would you have a Who's paying attention so clearly? Why would you have a 51.5 when you can have a 52? Because I just clicked the button a few times and then was satisfied with the volume. It doesn't bother you that it's 51.5 instead of 52? I'm not even looking. Uh, maybe you just need to start paying attention to the little things, Lauren. Mm -hmm. At least I close the cabinets. <laughs> Do you open the microwave before the timer goes off? No, you definitely do. Yeah. You, like you toast your, your waffles every morning yeah. and there'll be like seven seconds left. And you're like, nope, take it out. I'm like, <laughs> it was seven seconds. You could have just waited seven seconds. I you're saw like, a yeah. tweet that was like, I don't have time for all of that pomp and circumstance. <laughs> like when the beeper goes off, like nobody wants to hear that at 6 a.m. You're just like, no, it's, it's time. I have yeah. no idea. I'm so impatient. Yeah. That's definitely where it, it comes from. <laughs> I'm just like, seven seconds. Ugh, well, I'm like, what anymore. do you gain by waiting the, or not waiting? I'm just wait. like, it's cooked enough. What is seven seconds going to do? It is cooked enough. From the person who's worried about food expiring and not being it's cooked. It's a waffle. Mm -hmm. There are two types of people, those who want silence during a movie and those who want to ask questions. And then they marry each other. Yeah. I, I'm, I got a lot to say. <laughs> yes. You have to pause it. I pause it all the time. Yeah, you just have questions. I just want to have a conversation about it. And a lot of times the stuff we're watching has like 1,000 characters. And I'm like, we need to pause because I need a little book report of what I just and, saw. And why? Why is that? Because I was on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, exactly. Okay. Well, that's why it's really good for me to watch things in a foreign language because if it has subtitles, I have to read. I can't yeah. be on my phone. So now I look over and I just pause it anytime I see that you're not paying attention. And I'm like, do we need phone time or are we watching TV? Yeah, but you pause it so you can pet the dog sometimes. <laughs> you're like, Godric needs some attention. He and does. And you pause it. Yeah. And then I sit there because you've made me put my phone away and I'm just sitting there. Sometimes like he, you can't pet the dog and watch TV at the same time. He's on the couch with you. He's right next to you. I want to be fully devoted to him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Creepy. So, yeah. Sounded weird. That just sound weird. I wanted my attention completely devoted to him. How's that? I think the word devoted is, is a little weird. Yeah. Okay. He just needs love. He doesn't give him enough attention now that we have a baby. Well, Quinn has discovered him. Quinn is obsessed with noticing him. Yeah. She tracks his movements. She has like reached she out and touched him. She him. touches him. Uh, he's getting more used to her touching yeah. him. He's, We've barely mentioned Quinn. Wow, look at us. One hour in, we finally mentioned Quinn. Okay. Oh, okay. What about toilet paper over or under? Over. Yeah, I never paid attention. I, I know. literally didn't care. I know. <laughs> you got something you want to get off your chest? No, I just, I just know that you don't pay attention but to But now it. I pay attention. Okay. Ever yeah. since I found out that you do care and i would switch it i'm like okay i can i can put it on the yeah, way he it's wants like if it you don't care yeah why? i don't care yeah i never thought about it twice putting right. toilet paper i know <laughs> <laughs> no because i know because you would put it on differently like each time and i'm like are you not paying attention to this you psychopath <laughs> yeah what type of person doesn't care 
I've read a thing. I don't know if it's true that like over or under results in like, if you do it under, you end up pulling more than you need. Right. Exactly. I never knew that. Yeah. Just cause you're pulling down and it's, it's going this way. So like the potential, so like when you pull from the top, it's more likely to rip at the point that you want. <laughs> Sorry, I fell asleep. That is yeah, but we've saved so thing. much toilet paper this year by having it installed correctly. Okay. This is interesting. Okay. Y'all want to talk about generational divides? I don't know anyone under 40 who separates laundry into lights and darks. That was such a thing we had to do when we were kids. And we don't we do did that. whites, lights, and darks. So we did three. Wow. Yeah. And now it all goes in together. Uh, I, still, I still keep whites. I pull some white out. Yeah. Because they get stained yeah. i feel like i keep white separate but and i have no idea what temperature any of the laundry is washing on cold, <laughs> cold or warm i have no idea tap cold uh i have a capacitive okay so i have changed the press on nails that i i used to wear mm -hmm. i've been pretty much since the pandemic i stopped going to get gel manicures because the pandemic you obviously couldn't go to the nail salon um and i was doing dip manicures on myself at home for a little bit in the pandemic, but then press-ons just took off. They blew up. There's so many good colors and designs and patterns and stuff out there that I literally have been wearing press-ons for three years straight, have not gotten my nails done, have not been to a salon to get my fingernails done. So I've got my toes done because can't nobody fix that. Um, when Quinn was born, I was worried about scratching her mm -hmm. when she was a newborn. And so I didn't wear my press-ons. I actually cut my nails down really far. So I was just so worried about scratching her and then hadn't really worn press-ons again because press-ons add so much length and I'm washing my hands so much more with a newborn and an infant that the more you wash your hands, the more the press-ons fall off. So anyway, this brand called Ohora, uh, I'd seen them on TikTok before they reached out to me to do a brand deal and to do a TikTok brand deal. And I was like, let me try out the nails. Let's see, because I'm pretty avid about how much I love my press-ons. Mm -hmm. Let me just try them. And so they sent me a bunch and they're basically, they're semi-cured gel strips. They go on like a sticker. This means nothing to you, but <laughs> they're not, yeah. They, they're like sticker thin, but then you cure them with a little UV light. So they stay and they harden similar to gel, gel manicure, oh, okay. but you don't have to paint anything on and you can still do fun designs. I'm wearing like glittery nails right now and they're cut to the length of my nail. So it doesn't add length. They stay on longer than the press. They don't pop off as much as the press ons. I can wash my hands a ton. I'm not scratching Quinn. Um, so I was like, yeah, I love these so much. Let's do a brand deal. They gave me a 15% off discount. If anyone's interested in trying them, uh, my code is L O R Y N 15 and you can get, uh, you can get them at ohora.com. O H O R A.com. It sounds like we have our first sponsor of this episode, but we don't, <laughs> I just genuinely love these nails and I, I wanted to share it over here. Uh, I think if you're a press on girly, but you want to try something different, you should try these. I love them. They're so cute. And I get about like two, like two manicures out of each pack. I think How they're like 16, last? like over a week. I put these on last Wednesday. So I've had, it's Friday. This has been nine days with these. Okay. Yeah. And they don't damage you the way like gel manicure does. And you do it at home. Like, uh, anyway, for my nail girlies, that's my compositive. What's your compositive? My compositive is that I've been battling tennis and golf elbow for like two years. I don't know how or why I got it. Maybe because of golf and lifting weights and stuff, but I've been going to physical therapy. It hasn't really been helping. And then my therapist recommended I try out an ergonomic mouse, an ergonomic keyboard. And so they make these mouses that like basically flip your hand upright and then your keyboard, mm -hmm. your hands are at an angle. And I bought one and I tried it and like my arms feel significantly better oh, wow. in like four days. Wow. You didn't tell me that. Yeah. So I'm looking at it right now. It is funky looking. It's weird. It's like, it's the mouse like, is on its side. It's like learning to ride a bike over again. It's like my typing is bad. My, I'm not nearly <laughs> as good, but my arm feels significantly better in like a few days. So if you are like me and have elbow and wrist issues, and I think the other piece is, is that because I'm holding Quinn all the time, yeah. my arm is in such a weird like position where it's putting pressure on the tennis elbow tendons. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really like flaring up and it was like, there was points where like I had to be like, Hey, I can't hold her anymore because it hurts so bad. Yeah. So I thought physical therapy would help. It is helping a little bit, but 
the ergonomic mouse and keyboard actually have really helped quickly. So I use Logitech. There's a bunch of different brands, but I bought Logitech. But um, yeah, if you're dealing with tennis elbow or golf elbow and you're on a computer all day, try switching to an ergonomic mouse and keyboard. Nice. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. As always, make sure you're following us on whatever platform you're listening from. And if you're interested in the video portion, there's a video on Spotify and YouTube as well, the Kapower Hour YouTube. Let us know if there's something specific you want to hear more of. And we'll see you next week because we are Kapow. Kapow.